Can I get through there? What are? Brigitte Marsh is one of the very few female long-haul truckers in Germany. I'm married to my truck. If I had a partner who told me I should stop driving, I'd say, no, I'm not quitting, get lost. Despite the good money and freedom, hardly any women want to drive long haul. Why is that? Oh, my God, who needs a gym? At just after 4 a.m. in Laufenburg am Rhein, everyone is asleep, but Brigitte Morsch is already up. Early mornings are part of a trucker's job. No problem for Biggie, as everyone calls her. I've always been an early riser. As soon as the rooster crows, I'm awake. Biggie is 58 and has been a long-haul trucker for more than 30 years, and it's taken its toll. My morning ritual. Pills, pills, pills. She has diabetes and has had a stomach reduction. Biggie struggles with her weight, for which she blames her job. <clears throat> Just before five, she sets off for the depot. Her car is small, but it has something in common with her big truck. So. I bought an automatic because my truck is an automatic. And every time I got into the car, I forgot to shift. She thinks she broke her little toe last night. Well, it's easy to break your toe without even noticing. I just have to watch it. But I can't put a cast on it. It's better to put a bandage on, to immobilize it. <laughs> the trucker didn't think for a second about going to the doctor or skipping work, even though as a permanent employee she could have simply taken sick leave. Good morning. She greets Eddie, her truck. It belongs to the company, but only Biggie is allowed to drive it. Biggie will live, eat and sleep in the truck's five square meters for the next five days. Before starting off, she fuels up at the depot. Biggie never trained to be a professional truck driver. She got her driver's license more than 30 years ago, and that was enough to get her started. Biggie leaves the yard at 5.30. Truck drivers' working hours are strictly regulated in Germany. More than 10 hours of actual driving time is prohibited. But the entire shift, including preparation, fueling and loading and unloading, is often much longer. The shift is normally 13 hours, but it can be extended to 15 hours. Today it's only a 12-hour shift, because we're only driving. Only 12 hours, but that is still a very long shift. Biggie first has to drive 50 kilometers without a trailer because she has to pick it up from another company. But the access road is blocked. Oh, no. Oh, no. Damn. I have to go another way. Or can I get through? I can get through. Can I get through there? It's a tight squeeze, but Biggie knows her eddy. First problem solved, and time for the next. Oh, they're already unloading. Damn. Now we have to wait. I can't get to my trailer. 
Biggie's trailer to the left, another truck to the right. She is really oh. blocked. I have to turn around and back in through the warehouse. Reversing through a warehouse full of obstacles is precision work. A bit more manoeuvring, because she has to meet the trailer precisely. With the trailer, Biggie's truck is now complete. Check everything and raise the jacks. It's not easy. It's crooked. Oh, my God. Who needs a gym? Her load is industrial paint. She backs out again and into the parking lot. Before going further, Biggie wants to make a coffee. While the water heats, she takes care of the formalities. It says 7 o'clock, and we were here before 7. So this is when we finished hooking up. She saves everything for her employer in the onboard computer. But she is more old school and keeps a regular logbook too. Katharina Bäumler is the shipping company's junior manager. The truck's modern onboard computer lets her see exactly where Biggie and Eddie are at any time. Here you can see there was very heavy traffic last Monday. She could only drive four kilometers in 50 minutes, so she was badly delayed. From this, we know what to do next. And they have a very good monitoring system. And we can see that she fueled up this morning before leaving, did the normal pre-drive check, all through the onboard computer. So we don't have to call a thousand times. We can see it right away. And of course, if she arrives later, we know what the problem was. We see immediately that she was stuck in a traffic jam. Keeping track of it all is important for the haulage company. They have 160 trucks on the road and several locations across Germany. The headquarters is a large container terminal in Weil am Rhein. In all, 180 drivers work for Bäumler. Another 70 employees look after the garage and office. The shipping company is an important employer for the region. Martin Bäumler is the fourth generation head of the family business. With 35 million euros in annual sales and well-filled order books, he should be satisfied, but he has one problem. There's a shortage of good drivers like Brigitte Marsch. Young truck drivers are in short supply. He goes through the applications with his daughter Katharina and his wife. You wrote me to ask if we should invite him and I said yes. Katharina would like to hire more female drivers. The relationships are different. For example, if there are conflicts, which will hopefully always be rare, I've had women apologize the next day because they weren't in a good mood. It can happen, but I've never had that with men. So it's a different kind of cooperation. But both can do the job equally well. The company offers women short hauls, so they're always home in the evening. Still, only three of the 180 drivers are women. The boss thinks that's too few. Of course, we need more people in general. So we're glad for every person who joins in, who enjoys it, who sees the job as a vocation. Their gender doesn't matter at all. To keep the employees happy, there is a fruit basket and sweets, almost like in a Berlin startup. Biggie, of course, gets none of this from 50 kilometers away. She has to look after herself, but can she do it without coffee? 
Me? No. I need at least four of these big mugs of coffee per day. I can't do it without coffee. This is still too hot to drink. But if I know I have coffee, I can stay calm. <laughs> coffee breaks over. Now begins the long journey through four German states. And just as her boss envisions, truck driving is not a job for Biggie, but a vocation. You have to put your heart and soul into it, or it doesn't work. I don't drive trucks because I have to, but because I want to. Take Eddie, for example, my truck. Of course he's a truck, but he's also my teammate. We work together. When he's in a bad way, I'm in a bad way. Just like a partnership. I'm married to my truck. If I had a partner who told me I should stop driving, I'd say, no, I'm not quitting. Get lost. Driving is my life. Her love of driving has cost Biggie two marriages. That doesn't bother her, but she deeply regrets not seeing more of her two daughters. I've just never spent time with my two girls. And that really eats me up. I had them on weekends, and sometimes they drove with me, but I never saw them grow up. I didn't really notice when they started puberty, and I couldn't explain to them what was happening. I was never there for them, except by phone. I never held them in my arms. That was bad. It's still bad. Biggie has lived in Laufenburg am Rhein in Baden-Württemberg for about five years. The idyllic town on the Swiss border is a popular vacation spot. After just a short walk, you have left the EU and entered Swiss territory. Biggie lives just up the hill on the German side. She lives alone in an apartment owned by the freight company. Biggie is under stress. To improve her relationship with her daughters, she wants to move out of her low-cost apartment and move to a new city 150 kilometers away from her employer. It's worth it to her to live near her daughter, Bianca. That's not heavy at all. I thought it would be heavier. One more packed. Arranging the move alone with so little free time seems too much for Biggie. It's really a lot. Normally I'm always busy with work, but now I don't know if I'll get through this move. Now my two nieces have cancelled for Saturday and I don't know how we're going to do it. There are only three of us now. I can hardly fall asleep in the evening because my head is spinning. Back to the road, where there are other problems, like where is the next bathroom? I have to look for parking lots or rest stops with bathrooms. But the men can just get out of their truck and do their business right there.
Oder es gibt da viele Männer, die haben. A lot of men just go in a bottle, so they don't have to stop. But that's disgusting. And I've taken over trucks where the seat right here between the feet looked really icky. I think someone missed and it stank like that. Biggie pulls into a rest stop with bathrooms. Oh, there's Samuel. No, it's Luca, a colleague. No, it is Samuel. I'll park beside him. By law, after four hours driving, we have to rest. Hi. Hi. Hi, Biggie. Dropping your bread? Yeah. Everything work with a backup? Yeah, fine. I had to back in because they were unloading. Even though you were there at 6.30? Yeah. Have a good trip. Drive safely. You too. Talk to you soon. It costs one euro to use the bathroom. That adds up. Back in the truck, Biggie looks at her aching toe. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. <gasps> it's purple. They can't do anything with the little toe. Just bandage two together, I think. What a pain. A plaster will have to do. Biggie waits out her required break. Yeah. There's always something. She doesn't eat. Regular healthy eating is one of the big problems with hauling. Now it's my break, but I'm not hungry. I have some peppers that I eat while I'm driving and they keep my hunger away. But now in my break, I'm not hungry. That's the thing with truckers. Eating and driving instead of taking a break and then eating. Samuel ate outside and walked around. He's a young guy and takes care of himself, but the old ones like me don't pay attention. They only eat when they're hungry. Back on the road, Biggie gives her healthy sliced peppers a chance. Here in the truck, she's her own boss, but also very much alone. Lonely, yes, sometimes. You're alone a lot, especially on long hauls. You can do what you want, you can turn the music up loud, you can leave it off. When you're alone, you can do whatever you want. Biggie also knows solitude from home. Her workmate Ruth Müller is one of her few friends. They've known each other for about a year. Both are divorced, both drive trucks for the same carrier. That connects them. For Ruth, drinking coffee between moving boxes isn't a problem. Are they good? Yummy. Yummy, like always? And you know me well. Yeah, greedy guts. <laughs> Just not enough. Almost two years ago, Ruth retrained as a truck driver through the employment office, but she drives different routes than Biggie. I only do day trips. Why? First of all, I still have animals at home. And my dad. I'm not so good with long distances because I'm not used to them. 
Although there are only three female drivers in the company, they don't automatically get along. I was happy when I saw Ruth in her truck and went right over to her. But I have to say honestly, if she'd had long painted nails or been all made up, I wouldn't have gone up to her. But she's natural, like me. I think it's great that women drive trucks, no question. But I have to be able to cope. I have to do the work, not just drive. I have to be able to unload too. I had to change a tyre on the freeway in Italy. It took me four hours. But I changed the tyre. You can't do that with long fingernails. The battered fried apple rings start the two dreaming. Shall we drive to Genoa? Yeah. To the sea. The harbour's great. We'll tell the boss we won't be in tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of Genoa, we're back on the road in Germany. Biggie has to stop for the night. So we're coming up to the Zangerhausen south exit. We have to drive to the truck stop there. Theoretically, she's allowed to drive for another hour, but then there will be no rest area for the night. So let's see if we can find a nice spot. Save that. OK. Then exit and pause. And now we can shut off the engine. The first spot in the truck stop is right next to the bathrooms. That's important for Biggie. Fuel is even more expensive here than at home. 1.92, crazy. The truck is parked in the blazing sun. It's five o'clock and still 30 degrees in the shade. Biggie first darkens the cab. Her truck has air conditioning, but it only works when the engine is running. That burns fuel. It is not an inviting setting for an after-work stroll. The rest stops are mostly located in industrial areas. They're made for vehicles, not for pedestrians. <laughs> Biggie is not in the mood for sliced peppers or bread for dinner. She wants a hot meal. The food served at the rest stop is not exactly well-balanced or healthy. When I go to a truck stop now, every trucker sits alone at a table, always alone. In the past, we sat and ate together and talked. Even if we didn't know each other. Biggie spends the rest of her evening watching TV on her tablet in the truck. Comfortable, yes, but she's also alone. Okay. Around 8 o'clock, she starts getting ready for bed, using the truck stop bathroom. The rest area is filling up. Every free parking spot is occupied overnight. Biggie takes another look at her toe. The plaster will have to do. Purple foot. Stupid. It's still light outside, but Biggie has to sleep. The alarm is set for three, so she can start off at four as planned. But the departure next morning is hectic. Biggie has slept in. It's already nearly four and her toe has been aching all night. 
So how does it feel? It's terrible. Oh, well. She quickly takes out the garbage and brushes her teeth in the rest stop bathroom. Time is tight, so Biggie buys a coffee from the vending machine. It costs three euros, but she doesn't have time to make one in the truck. And no coffee is a no-go. But the coffee isn't good. Oh, that's awful. Oh, it's hot and awful without milk. Biggie had planned on one hour to start her workday, but 30 minutes will have to be enough. A quick pre-drive check. The noise is coming from this refrigerated truck. It parked behind her and the coolers ran all night. Another reason she slept so badly. At 20 past four, Biggie starts her journey 20 minutes later than planned. I shut off the alarm before it rang. And I was awake earlier. But then you forget the time. Now we have to hurry a bit. The sun slowly rises. Biggie checks the radio. The last thing she needs now is a traffic jam. OK, it's finished. I heard right. Biggie knows the route and knows where she can get through the fastest. And she doesn't quite stick to the 60 kilometers an hour speed limit for trucks. We're only doing 68. So nobody can say anything. Now for some coffee. I won't wake up today. I didn't sleep properly. The last kilometers lead Biggie through small villages, and she actually reaches her drop-off point on time. She has to wear a safety vest and boots here. So. Biggie is solely responsible for getting the paint from her trailer into the company's tanks. It's going. After the paint is out, she still has to clean the tanks. Biggie is on her way to the next job. The hectic morning is over. Let's say I've gotten calmer with age. I used to be a real hothead, driving at top speed. And now I'm only driving at 83. Take it easy. You only live once. I don't want to make myself crazy or burn myself out. I'm taking it easy. A few weeks later, Biggie sends us a message. Her toe has healed, and the move worked out too. So, so hello. I feel good, and I'm near my daughter. My ex-husband often comes by and helps me put up the lamps. It's really nice. Biggie is now trying to manage everything better, long-distance driving and the family.